Hello guys, N plus one query problem in Eloquent in Laravel is by far the number one performance issue in Laravel projects. And I have a lot of videos about that. If you search for N plus one on my channel, there are a lot of videos. But in this video, I will show you how Laravel automates the prevention of N plus one query and also why that automation doesn't work every time. I will show you when it doesn't work and what to do instead. So one of those videos previously on my channel is this. In Laravel 8.43, they released prevention from N plus one query. In the official Laravel docs, it's called preventing lazy loading. First, let me demonstrate how it works. So here I am in my demo project to list the tasks with their users. And this is a classical N plus one query scenario. In the controller, you load the tasks. Task has belongs to relationship to a user. And then in the blade, you have task username in the for each loop, which will call a new SQL query every time they need a user. So in the Laravel debug bar down below, we have two tasks and we have two queries duplicated to get the users. In the database, we have two tasks here with user ID one, but it still performs two queries. If we had three tasks, for example, task three, then if we refresh, we have one more query to the database. So this is a classical N plus one query problem. Now what that prevent lazy loading does in the app service provider of your project, you could do this model prevent lazy loading with a condition, possibly this is kind of a recommended way to prevent that on local and staging and testing environments, because in case of N plus one query happening, Laravel will throw an exception. So that is not advisable behavior on production because then your page wouldn't even work. It would throw 500 error. So you should catch those on local before deploying to production. And then it says clearly attempted to lazy load user, but lazy loading is disabled. And you can of course fix that in the controller by loading task with user and then get like this. And then the exception disappears and there's only one query to the user's table. So it seems like you set that automation and you kind of forget about it because it would throw exception if you have n plus one query problem, but not so fast. Let's get back to the wrong code to task all, which should throw an exception and it does. But now let's have only one record in the database, one task. Now we refresh and the page loads well. So it doesn't throw any exception, it doesn't detect N plus one query, and it doesn't inform us that something is wrong. Same happens if we don't have any records, by the way. So we can delete that tasks, empty table, it loads well, it doesn't throw any exceptions. So the exception is loaded and N plus one query is detected only when the second lazy loaded query actually is executed. Again, I created two new tasks and if we reload the same page, now we have an exception. In other words, that disable lazy loading and N plus one query prevention works on the data. If you have the real data to query and not the empty page. Laravel doesn't magically scan the code for structure and searching for patterns of N plus one query. No, it just looks at SQL queries and detects the duplicated queries and eloquent models actually being used used. Now, when we know that information, what can we do with that? What is the best way to enable that automation to actually work? First, of course, when doing manual testing, test the page on actual real data. So add at least a few rows of data and see if the page generally works, which would also along the way detect N plus one queries. But if you or other developers forget that, we can still enable that lazy loading prevention in the tests. So that is one of the solution that I would suggest. For example, you would write a feature test just that task list loads successfully. It's a typical smoke test when you just get the URL and you assert the status of 200. And now here, if you create the records, at least a few records, in this case, I'm creating one user with three tasks, this would be enough. So n plus one query would be detected, throw exception, and then the status would not be 200. So if we run PHP artisan test here, the result will be failed test, failed asserting that 500 is identical to 200. And then you go to Laravel log and see what actually caused that 500 status to be returned. 
and then you will find out that it's actually n plus one query detected. So yeah, this would be my kind of overall advice when creating automated tests and you should create them, by the way. The first quick type of test that you should write is actually those so-called smoke tests that the page load successfully or API endpoints return successful results. So my advice is when creating those tests, add enough data so along the way Laravel would test if there's no n plus one query problem. Again, if we fix that in the controller and then rerun our tests, PHP artisan test, it will be passed as successful. What do you think about this approach? Would you do something differently? Let's discuss in the comments below. And if you are new to writing tests in Laravel, one of my recently updated courses to Laravel 11 is about testing in Laravel for beginners, which includes PEST and PHP unit, because in Laravel 11, PEST became kind of a default first choice. So all the examples are covered with both PEST and PHP unit in that course. I will link that in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.